Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is February the 17th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, I wish to offer this video this morning based upon many of the replies that I have received after some of the videos from each of you and even from private emails that you have sent me and phone conversations that we have had. Now, I know from my own experience that Oftentimes, we feel alone in our journeys. We, we think that we're experiencing things that other people aren't experiencing. But what I have learned and what I am still learning is that much of what we experience, our journeys are more alike than we think. And the struggles that we are facing individually are being shared throughout the entire family of God. And that's why if, for example, you were to read a book called The Pilgrim's Progress, you will identify with so many things within that book because each of us at different periods of our journey, we all experience the same thing. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you this morning my testimony, my story in hopes that it will encourage you and help guide you in your personal journey. You see, I was raised in a preacher's home. And although I knew the story of the Bible and the story of Jesus, it was only intellectual. I had not experienced it for myself. Well, by the time I was 14, I was smoking pot, I was drinking, I was having sex. By the time I was 16, I was dropping acid. By the time I was 18, I was in prison. And then at the age of 19, I had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus. Now, this was a supernatural experience. I certainly could not explain it. And in reality, I didn't even understand it. But I knew something had changed within me. Everything that I once loved, everything that I once desired, I now hated. And everything that I once hated, I truly now loved. And the first thing that happened in that experience is I was so hungry for the Word of God. I literally poured through the pages of Scripture hour after hour after hour each and every day. I was so radical in my new change that everyone I knew, even church-going people, told me that I was taking things much too far. And this confused me. And I will admit even though I needed to be reined in a little bit, I wish someone would have been there to help smooth out the edges where I appeared to others to be so rough around the edges, if that makes sense to you. Well, even in my desire for the Word of God, and even in as much as I was reading, I can tell you from where I am today, I didn't get it. Well, eventually I went to Bible college, I graduated, I pastored a church, and at this point, I still didn't get it. I knew all the stories, I knew all the information, but I was missing something. I didn't know at that point I was missing something, but knowing where I am today and looking back, I can truly tell you that I was missing something. And this brings me to the heart of the matter that I want to share with you this morning. Because the hardest part of teaching the Word of God is knowing that when you're speaking to someone and even when they're telling you, yes, pastor, I get it, you know that they don't get it. They get it intellectually. And even though they want to get it, they desire it so desperately, they're just not at the point in their journey to fully understand the spiritual depth in the words that they are reading upon the page. I've often tried to explain it like this. It's like trying to explain the color blue to a blind man. 
I mean, stop and consider that for a moment. If you were going to try to explain the color blue to someone who is blind, how would you do it? No matter what words you use, no matter how eloquent you were, no matter how articulate you presented the message, you presented the explanation, you would fall miserably short in truly touching on the beauty that lies in the color blue. And here's what I can tell you. After having a real supernatural encounter with the Lord Jesus, I mean the kind of encounter that Paul had on the road to Damascus, after having spent years in Bible college and pastoring and even reading the Bible, after all of my mistakes and all of my successes, all of my backslidings and all of my repentance, the one significant factor that I can point to that has changed me into the man that I am today is the reading of the Word of God. And when I say reading the Word of God, I'm speaking of a continual practice of reading the Word of God. Think about it like this. If you and I were to take, I think they're called metal detectors. You hold them in your hand. They have a round disc on the bottom. You sweep them across the ground and you're looking for precious objects. Well, the first time you read the Bible, that's kind of what it's like. You're sweeping across the surface looking for some treasure. But the second time you read the Bible, you approach the ground with a shovel. And you may dig a foot or two foot deep. And you may discover something there that you did not see the first time because it wasn't on the surface. It was a little bit deeper. Well, the third time you read the Bible... It's like digging four or five foot deep. And the more you read the Bible, the deeper you are digging. And as you already know, the most precious of treasures lie at the deepest points. And that's why it's so important that we make it a daily practice of reading the Word of God. Now, at what point in your reading, and let me just say, I encourage you to read the New Testament more than the Old because the Old Testament are history lessons. Now, of course, Psalms and Proverbs would be excluded from that, but for the most part, the Old Testament is like reading a history. But the New Testament, especially the writings of Paul, man, that's where the meat is. And if you want to grow, you're not going to grow off of milk. You're not going to grow off of baby food. You need to get meat into your system. And that's why I encourage you time after time after time again to read five chapters of the New Testament every single day, which will allow you to read the New Testament once every two months, six times a year, 30 times in five years. You can't imagine what that's going to do for you. Well, as I was saying, I can't say as to what point in your reading the Bible where something is just going to click. I mean, it's just going to change. You're going to be like the blind man and your eyes are going to open and you're going to think that you got it way back when, but all of a sudden you're going to realize that you are in a new dimension. You are in another universe of understanding and everything is going to come together because now you're seeing the Bible. Now you've dug into the depths of its riches and you're going to discover precious gems of truth that most people don't even realize exist because they're too busy scanning across the surface or maybe only digging a foot or two deep. And the more you read the Bible, the more truth you're going to uncover. And this is what the Bible calls the secret place of God. And it's only there for the most diligent of seekers. Do you remember when Jesus said, many are those who travel the wide road? But if you'll go back and look at that passage, you'll see that Jesus says, few are those who find the narrow road. And the key word is, is find. And you can only find it if you're seeking it. It's secret. It's kept hidden from most. And it's sad and unfortunate that most people that live on planet Earth will never discover these secret places of God 
because they will not put in the time or effort that it requires. You see, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is nothing you can do that is more important to your Christian growth than reading the Word of God, specifically the New Testament. You cannot grow as a follower of the Lord Jesus without reading the Word of God, and you cannot read the Word of God without growing. Because when we read the Word of God, it's like looking in a mirror. We see ourselves, and oftentimes we see how short we fall from meeting the measure that the Bible has set before us, meeting the standard. But the more we read the Word of God and the more we see of ourselves, the more repentance will follow and the more obedient we will become. But we must ask ourselves the question at this time, is there a desire to read the Word of God? Because I can tell you, friends, and it's not my intention to offend you, but this is the absolute truth. If you do not have a desire for the Word of God, you are not born again. Now, I'm not saying if you don't read the Word of God, you have the desire, but you find it difficult to be obedient to that desire. We all encounter that, especially early on in learning the discipline of reading the Bible. But if there is no desire within you to read the Word of God, then you are not born again. Because those who have truly been born again hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. And the Holy Bible is where God speaks to us. Therefore, that's where we go for our source of spiritual food. And so I simply wanted to encourage you this morning, based upon many of the things that you have asked me about, you have discussed with me that you were struggling with and that you are experiencing in your own personal journeys. I have been there and there's nothing wrong with where you're at if you've been truly born again, if you have that desire for the word of God. But as in our example, you're only two feet deep. You're only three foot deep. You desire what lies within the depths 50 feet deep but you can't just dig a 50-foot hole all at once. You have to start at the surface and dig your way down layer by layer. And the way you do that in the context of what we're speaking about this morning is you read the Bible over and over and over and over. And every time you read, you're a little bit deeper and a little bit closer to discovering those truths that are hidden from most. So I want to encourage you to make it a daily discipline to read the Word of God. Read it in large portions, maybe even an entire book in one sitting. Get the full picture of what the text is saying. Forget everything that you've been told, everything that you've been taught. Sit down and read the Bible, even if you've read it many times. Make yourself, every time you read it, approach it as if it's your first time reading it. And allow God's Spirit to speak through His Word to you, to examine you, to change you and transform you. Conform yourself to its teachings regardless of how you feel or what you think. Let it become your source, your rule of authority. And if you do that, friends, it's impossible for you not to grow. And so I'll simply end by saying this. If someone were to ask me, what is the pivotal moment that everything changed, that everything intellectual, all of a sudden, a trap door opened, so to speak, and it all fell into my soul at one time. It all fell into my heart at one time. And where I thought I once understood, I realized that I really had no clue. Well, in order to answer that, I couldn't, I couldn't pick an exact moment. It happened over a period of time, but it only happened because I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I realized if I wanted something different, I had to do something different. And so I forgot what everyone else around me was telling me. I opened the Bible. I determined to plant myself there. And it became the most important discipline and practice of my life. 
And somewhere in that practice, the change occurred. And so the only thing that I can leave you with this morning, the only thing I can tell you is that if you will stay faithful as it happened for me, so will it you, friend. And so my prayer for you today is as as you read the Bible each day, you will allow the Bible to read you. Now, may the Lord Jesus bring you to a place where you can receive all the blessing that he has in store for you, all the spiritual blessing that he has reserved for you. I love you, friends. I truly love you, and I pray for each of you every day. Now, as Father, Son, and his sweet Holy Spirit so wills, I'll see you on the next video.